Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this 4th of July weekend and a weekend where we're celebrating communion for all people. I'm so glad that you're here. I want to extend a special thank you to Janet Schmidt, our organist, for providing such wonderful music as we start and we finish today on this uh, holiday weekend. I'm Reverend Meredith Brown, our lead pastor here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, who's actually on vacation this week, our staff, uh, the, all the folks who are helping to lead worship, it is our honor to welcome you today. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I want to say hello and thank you especially to those who are worshiping with us for the first time today. Thank you for doing that. I encourage you and everyone joining with us to fill out the contact form. It's pinned right in the comments section. That's a wonderful way that we'll be able to connect with you, that you can provide uh, prayers that you'd like to share with our pastors and with our prayer team for praying, and that we'll be able to connect you in with all the ministry opportunities that we have with Douglas Avenue online worship, so many small groups for growth and faith, ways to serve in our community. So fill out that contact form so that we can uh, connect with you and offer all those things. Today is a communion Sunday for all people. Everyone is welcome to participate. And I encourage you to uh, get ready some bread, some crackers, some kind of a baked good, and also some juice or a beverage so that when we get to that part of the service, you can join with us in sharing in that holy meal. When we do worship together here at Douglas Avenue, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. And what that means when we covenant to participate is that we're really gonna go all in and participate in this worship service. Uh, that may mean lighting a candle to help you focus. We encourage you to turn off other devices and distraction, close down other windows on your devices so that you can really focus in. And then when it's time to sing, stand up and sing. When we're praying, pray. When when you're invited to join in the responses, join in the responses so that we fully participate together. And then we promise and covenant to be a blessing. That means that the comments that we make are a blessing to one another and support each other. We listen well, we speak well, and everything that we do here together becomes a blessing for all who participate, for the entire community, and for the world. Now we're going to share the love and peace of Jesus Christ with one another as well. We do that here at Douglas Avenue with American Sign Language. I encourage you to make these signs with me. The sign for peace is hands on top of each other and turned and then flattened out. So like a transition to calm. Peace be with fists together. And then point for you. So peace be with you. And I encourage you to share that with those you may be gathered with, with people online uh, joining with us, with me. Let's share the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hi everyone, we're the Montgomery family. We've been members of Douglas Avenue for over three years now. Uh, please join us in the call to worship. Your line is, I'm gonna let my light shine. Let's practice saying that together now. Everyone, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna let, let my, my light shine. shine. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I'm, I'm gonna, gonna let, let my, my light, light shine. shine. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I'm, I'm going to let, let the light, light shine. shine. We don't have to be afraid. We can let our light shine. We can trust our abundant God that there is enough for all. I'm, I'm going to let, let my, my light, light shine. shine. Good morning. I'm Becca Philbrook, and I'm the Director of Music Ministries here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm here with Pastor Meredith Brown and Janet Schmidt on the piano. Please join us in singing We Are Called.
It's time for one of our favorite things for people of all ages, small talk, but especially kids. I want you to gather close so you can see and hear everything that goes on with small talk. You're not going to want to miss anything today, I promise you. So kids, come in close. Our small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb. So come in close for small talk, and then be ready to join with us in our special adventure explorer song, This Little Light of Mine. It's time for small talk. Hi, everybody. It is Miss Laurie and Laud and Laud's assistant, Cohen. And today is Sunday, July the 5th. Yesterday was the 4th of July. And I hope we all had a great time yesterday. The 4th of July works really well for us this week because we've been talking about letting our light shine. And Laud's favorite light to shine apparently is the sparkler. It reminds him to let his light shine and to share God's word with everyone. So I told him this year we could do the sparklers. Last year we could not do the sparklers because we were in church. This year we're at home. So we can do our sparklers. So we're gonna show you how Laud likes to let his light shine. Or maybe. Oh, there we go! Sparklers, safety glasses, a flammable sheep. What could possibly go wrong? You'll notice we're by the pond. But anyway, have a great week, everybody. I hope you had a great 4th of July getting a little close, Laud. Don't try that at home. Love and miss you guys. Bye. Hi, Adventure Explorers. We're going to sing through our song, This Little Light of Mine, one more time. We're going to do it straight through, so get your lights ready. Here we go. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Put it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Put it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Put it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Great job, Adventure Explorers. Let your light shine. Good morning. My name is Jill Gordon. I am a trustee and president of the United Methodist Women at DAUMC. Our reading from the Bible today is John chapter 6, verses 3 through 14. Jesus went up to the mountain and sat there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? He said this to Philip, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. 
so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them all up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. For some vacation time this summer, my family is heading out to do some camping. We're hoping that'll be good and safe and well social distanced. Um, I enjoy camping with my family and I'm really looking forward to the time away to unplug and relax, to enjoy the silence, uh, to enjoy the beautiful scenery that uh, we'll have. I did not, however, grow up camping in my family of origin. Campy and camping is an experience that I've learned to love with my husband Curtis and my daughters Joy and Karis. Now one of my favorite camping trips that we've ever taken together was to Crater Lake in Oregon. This is an exquisite corner of God's creation and I commend it to you if you can ever get there. The lake formed in the center of this crater of that a long dormant volcano is just breathtaking as is the hike down to that lake and the hike back up out of that lake. In any case, we camped there late one August and we had beautiful sunny days with a high of around 75 and beautiful crisp and chilly nights. It was perfect for campfires and storytelling and s'mores and singing and stargazing and all of those wonderful things you can do uh, on those evenings of camping. Now, I distinctly remember one of those evenings was completely devoid of moonlight. And as we were sitting around the fire, enjoying the campfire, I could just put my head back in my camping chair. And I swear I could see all of the stars in the universe and all of their clarity and complexity of relationship with one another, the vast multitude of lights and galaxies and constellations and on into infinity. It was amazing. Now, one of the things I've learned about camping is that you should always have your flashlight with you. This is my camping flashlight. It's kind of small. I'm able to keep it in my pocket with me wherever it is that I'm camping. And it's super handy. It's got a little push button. Super handy for getting a good look under rocks and fallen limbs and peering into caves and for exploring. But even more importantly, I found my flashlight is a critical piece of equipment for those 2 a.m. runs to the porta party. Now, in that aforementioned camping trip to Crater Lake with its clear skies and moonless nights, I remember waking up in the tent and it being completely pitch dark. I, of course, woke up because I needed to make that run to the porta potty on that moonless night. So I reached into my shoe for my flashlight. That's where I keep my flashlight when I'm camping at night, in my shoe, because I can find it there. But it was not there. So I'm groping around and I can't find it. My husband Curtis is snoring and I really don't want to wake up him. I don't really want to wake up the girl. So I continue kind of groping around for it. And then I hear this little voice out of the darkness. Mommy, are you okay? It was my oldest daughter, Joy, and she was maybe 10 at the time. And I was like, it's okay, sweetie. I just need to go to the bathroom and I can't find my flashlight. And then, click, her little headlamp comes on and it illuminates her sweet little face. And with a big smile, she says, you can use mine and I'll go with you. I was so glad Joy was awake and had her headlamp on. Apparently there was not gonna be groping around in the dark for this kid looking for a, head, uh, for a flashlight. And I was really excited that she was more than willing to share that light and her companionship too for that 2 a.m. scurry off to the porta potty. Those kinds of small acts of sharing are such an important part of our life together, aren't they? For our family, for 
our family in Christ, as a community, whether it's sharing your flashlight at that point of need, sharing companionship, love, allyship, food, hope. Those acts of sharing and generosity are necessary for life and for transformation. In our Bible story today, we see that brand of brave sharing and that transformation happen. In our story, Jesus and his disciples had gone out to the Sea of Galilee and were joined by a crowd of 5,000 people, at least 5,000. And there was 5,000 hungry people that needed to be fed. Jesus insisted that this crowd needed to be fed even. You see, Jesus loves and cares for the entirety of who we are, the needs of our physical bodies, as well as the needs of our minds and our spirits. Jesus goes on in our story to have a testing conversation with his disciple Philip, who is dumbfounded by both the amount and cost of food needed to feed so many people. Then another disciple comes on the scene, Andrew. He shows up with a young person who had bravely stepped forward to give his own food to feed the people. Now it was just five barley loaves and a couple of fish, but it was a brave offering, a brave offering of light, if you will, in the face of an overwhelming need with apparently no way forward in that darkness. Jesus takes this brave offering, gives thanks to God for it, and then distributes it among the people. With the powerful, abundant, grace-filled love of Jesus, all 5,000 people gathered there, ate all that they wanted, our story says, and had 12 baskets of leftovers at the very end. They gathered up 12 basketfuls of leftover food. Do the math with me now. Five barley loaves plus two fish plus 5,000 people multiplied the, the grace and love of the abundant Jesus Christ equals 5,000 plus full bellies with 12 baskets left over. More than enough. So much more than enough even. There's so much going on in this story and so many interpretations of it. One is, of course, that the brave offering of this young person is given to Jesus and with his miraculous touch, with the power of our abundant God, Jesus feeds over 5,000 people. I believe this to be true because I know that the expansive love of God shown especially to us in the love and grace of Jesus Christ is on full display in this miracle. I know that Jesus offers us that abundant, extravagant love and grace every day. I have experienced that abundant love on more occasions than I too often realize in the moment, in ways large and small. Another interpretation for this story that I also believe is true is this. The willing generosity, the brave action of the young person who offered his food might very well have elicited a cascade of generosity so that the people gathered all uncovered and offered up all the food that they had brought to. Their combined generosity made sure that all 5,000 people gathered there had as much to eat as they wanted with a complete abundance of leftovers to spare, 12 baskets full. Which of these interpretations is best? My answer to that is yes, yes, yes. Because both of them get to the heart of the matter in Jesus. There is always enough, always. Enough food, 
enough kindness, enough love, enough hope, enough light, enough possibility, enough power, enough resources, more than enough. In the abundance of God's love, we too can always be like that young person, unafraid to let our light shine, willing to be generous, believing in that abundant power of God to work those miracles, small and large. As the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said in his sermon, Strength to Love, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Being brave and generous and sharing the light of love, hope, food, allyship, actions that support the most vulnerable to disease and disparity, these are ways that we let our sh light shine, driving out the darkness. Ways that we let our love shine, conquering hate. It's the way darkness is dispelled, not with darkness, but with more light. It's the way hate is conquered, not with more hate, but with more love and more love and more love. It's how we allow Jesus's love to shine through us, being brave and joining with Jesus in the abundant miracles of healing and hope that he longs to and does share in ways small and large. As we gather at Jesus' communion table, at his feast of abundance, let us remember that in him there is always enough. Amen. We're now going to share in this week's Assignment DAUMC Ad Adventure Explorers Edition, where we, uh, people have been sending in their pictures of some of their light activities that they've been doing with Adventure Explorers, or sharing pictures of favorite sources of light in their lives. So come close and enjoy our Assignment DAUMC, all about light, and our wonderful song that goes with it, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Oh, 
generous is surely a way that we share light and life and hope and love into our world. Your financial giving is making a world of difference through the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Thank you for those generous financial gifts and we encourage you to continue to give those. You can do that through our online uh, giving portal which is available through our web page and is available in the comments there's a link there you can do that through your own financial institutions bill pay you can have uh, money automatically sent to Douglas Avenue and of course you can give our office a call uh, and we can receive uh, checks and offerings from you as well or set up an online bill pay with you through our financial institution those gifts are making all the difference in the way that we can share that hope and light and love of Jesus Christ and the world. Thank you for them. I also want to encourage you again to fill out your contact form so that we can connect with you through the week, so that we can pray with you through the week. There's a place there, of course, for you to share your prayers for our pastors and for our prayer team. And then I want to encourage you just to continue to connect with us. We have all of these opportunities for ministry. Um, so let us connect with you to be able to help you grow in your spirit and your faith and in your following of Jesus Christ whom we love. Our offering of hope today is brought to us uh, so beautifully by Lori Payne Mullet. Let us receive this offering of hope. Hi, I'm Lori Payne Mullet. I serve on the SPRC and the board of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. We're living in crazy times for sure, but there's still a lot of things that bring me hope. To me, Wouldn't It Be Lovely is a perfect example. Early on in the pandemic, the ladies were working from home. They were sewing, painting, trying to take care of their children, and it was very difficult for sure. We recently were able to move them back into the church building, and they're all really happy to have that normalcy back into their life. We are moving forward in pretty remarkable ways right now. We are selling products online through our website. We're having our little black dress gala in a couple weeks, virtually. That'll be different for everybody. We are planning a sale for the fall, and that is going to be different than any sale we've ever had before. All of this is a sign of hope. We are hopeful for our future, and we continue to plan. Every morning I read from this book. It's called Moments of Peace in the Presence of God. It helps me start my day knowing God is with me. My faith in God gives me hope during these unsettling times. I hope your faith in God brings you hope too. And I'm going to close with a verse from Romans. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. I wish you all a great week. Please join us in singing, Lord, I Need You. guides
everyone is invited to this table, our table of Holy Communion that we're going to share for all people. And I encourage you, if you have not already done so, to bring your bread, your baked good, your crackers, whatever it is you've brought, bring that close to you, and to get your juice, your beverage, whatever it is you brought with you, and bring that close to you as we share in this table, Jesus' table, in Holy Communion. This time of year at the 4th of July holiday, People across this country and from different backgrounds have traditionally come together around tables. Picnic tables, kitchen tables, dining tables, and whether it was barbecue or fried chicken or mom's favorite dish that she liked to make or hot dogs or uh, potluck or whatever was in the pantry or whatever people could afford, many pause to remember the founding value of independence and hopefully enjoy the company of friends and loved ones. It is a different year, substantially different, and rightly so. For this year, we pause to ask ourselves, what is life-giving? To gather or to safely distance? Will we think only of our own assumptions of safety or will we understand the ramifications of our actions on the most vulnerable populations? Those who don't have a choice about going to work, those without health care, those black and brown people who are dying at higher rates. And there are more questions. What is freedom? An ideal to which we give lip service while ignoring the work we must truly do to enact the change that freedom requires? Do we listen to the clarion call of the streets and the voice of Jesus Christ, the liberator who bids us pray and work for the kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven? A place where there is a seat for all at the table. Today, we gather around Jesus' liberation table, the communion table in all kinds of different places to remember what true freedom really means. It's a table where outsiders and the least of these were invited. It's a table where the privileged also had a place, but were invited to let the seats of honor be given to those who had not previously been afforded access to them. All are invited to this table of freedom. You don't have to earn it, and you shouldn't have to fight for it. You simply have to accept the chair that's pulled up all ready for you. Yet as we prepare ourselves for this feast, we are called to admit the complexity that lies at the edges of our celebrations. Please join with me in our prayer of confession, and please respond God, in your mercy, forgive and transform. Let us pray. For all the ways we colonize each other with expectations, beliefs, judgments, and our own fear, God, in your mercy, forgive and transform. For all the ways we squander right relationship, grabbing to have more while some go without, God, in your mercy, forgive and transform. For all the ways we abuse our freedom, engaging hateful speech that injures and demeans, God, in your mercy, forgive and transform. For all the ways we deny equality, deeming some in and others out, God, in your mercy, forgive and transform. For all the ways we have refused to let go of our privilege, whining about how hard it is to change our ways, our systems, our lifestyles, God, in your mercy, forgive and transform. Please join with me in a silent prayer of confession. And hear these words of assurance. Jesus said, I have come to set the prisoners free. No matter what binds you this day, freedom is yours through new life in Jesus Christ. 
We will continue to make mistakes, but the biggest one would be not to heed the call to try and try again. And so in the name of him who came to loose the chains, Jesus Christ, you are forgiven, we are forgiven, set free to try again. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to continue with our prayers of great thanksgiving. Some of these are spoken responses, and I encourage you to join with me as those appear on your screen. To again, bring your bread, baked good crackers, and your, your uh, juice, your beverage close to you so that we can share together in this holy meal. Please join with me now. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing to give our praise to you this day, holy God, liberator of all humankind. You unleashed your creative power and a world blossomed. You bestowed upon every living thing life and breath, color and movement. No matter how many battles we wage within and between ourselves and against you, your promise, vision, and gift of peace and abundance continues. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus. To those who were imprisoned by status, law, race, origin, illness, poverty, gender, age, disease, he said, your belief has set you free. You are a child of God. In the name of your son Jesus, we offer the prayers of our hearts to you as we gather at his table of freedom spread throughout geography and time. Receive our prayers as we share them aloud in our hearts, in the comments, and on the contact form. Loving God, we pray for all who seek healing in body, mind, spirit, and relationship. We pray for all who grieve this day, remembering especially the families and friends of Bill, Christopher, and Marcia, killed by their co-worker at the bun plant here in Springfield. We pray for all who work to keep our community places safe and healthy. Healthcare workers, first responders, government employees, service industry workers, military service personnel, and essential employees of all kinds. We pray for the leaders of our communities, states, and nation, that they may lead compassionately in ways that uphold the most vulnerable in our midst. We pray for all who are celebrating this day. We give thanks for celebrations of our country and how far we have come while recognizing and working toward how far we have yet to go for true freedom for all people. We pray for our church, our families, our friends, and ourselves. God, in your mercy, receive all of our prayers. I invite you to pick up your bread, your crackers, your baked good, and continue with me in prayer. Jesus invited disciples, friends, and strangers alike to his tables. Jesus proclaimed God's grace to all with whom he broke bread. I invite you to put your bread down and pick up your cup, your juice, your beverage. 
Jesus proclaimed God's love to all whom he shared the cup. Why don't you put your beverage down? And Jesus told us to remember, repeat after me, freedom has come and freedom is coming. Now I invite you to lift your hands up and pray with me as we invite the Holy Spirit into this meal. Abundant God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon all gathered at this table across geography and time and pour out your Holy Spirit upon the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Transform this meal and transform this body so that we might be free to let our light shine, to love without condition, invite without hesitance, go without reservation, and proclaim your freedom to all the world. I invite you to put your hands down. And with the confidence of God's precious children, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverage that we now eat are a tangible experience of Jesus' transforming grace and love, feeding us, healing us, challenging us, and changing us from the inside out. Pick up your piece of bread. Eat and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. Let's eat together. Now I invite you to pick up your cup, drink and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. Let's drink together. And please join with me in our prayer of thanks, repeating after me. Eternal God, Thank you for this holy mystery in which you give yourself to us through the bread and cup. Send us from this meal in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand and join us in our closing song, Pass It On. I wish for you my friend. 
Thank you so much for joining with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for this worship service on the 4th of July weekend with communion for all people. Oh, I just hope that this has been a wonderful, powerful, uplifting experience for you, that you will join with us again for online worship, Sunday mornings at 1030, Wednesday base camp worship at 630 p.m. right on the Facebook page and uh, the web page as well. And again, that you will connect with us so that we can be in ministry uh, to you and with you in this season. We love you. We miss getting to see you uh, face to face in person, but we're so grateful that we can worship and be together in these incredibly important ways. Now as you go from this time of worship, go knowing that God loves you completely, that Jesus Christ lights the way for you with his abundant love and grace, and that the Holy Spirit empowers you to bravely share your light everywhere that you go. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. <music>